Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about RCUG guideline about cervical cerclage. So first of all, let us understand what is cervical cerclage. Cervical cerclage, also known as cervical stitch, is a treatment for cervical weakness when the cervix starts to shorten and open too early during pregnancy, causing either late miscarriage or preterm birth. So what are the types of cerclage? We have history indicated cerclage, ultrasound indicated cerclage, rescues or emergency cerclage, McDonnell stitch, Schirotker stitch, transabdominal cerclage and occlusion cerclage. So what is history indicated cerclage and what are the indications of it? Uh, history indicated cerclage is basically the insertion of cerclage as a result of factors in women's obstetric or gynecological history which increase the risk of spontaneous second trimester loss or the preterm birth. And when should history indicated cerclage be offered? Women with a single 10 pregnancies and three or more previous preterm births should be offered a history indicated cervical cerclage. History indicated cerclage should not routinely be offered to the woman with less than three previous uh, preterm births and or second trimester losses without additional risk factors. And it is unknown if specific characteristics of previous adverse events that are helpful in detection to place a history indicated cerclage, for example, painless dilatation, rupture of membrane, and prior cervical surgery. Now, who to offer cerclage? Women with a history of one or more spontaneous second trimester loss or the preterm births who are undergoing uh, ultrasound surveillance of cervical length should be offered cerclage if the cervix is 25 mm or less at gestational age of less than 25 weeks. Now, at what gestation is a history indicated cerclage inserted? A history indicated suture is performed as a prophylactic measure in asymptomatic women and usually inserted as a planned procedure at 11 to 14 weeks of gestation. Now, what is ultrasound indicated cerclage? It is the insertion of cerclage as a therapeutic measure in the cases of cervical length shortening seen on transvaginal ultrasound. Now, ultrasound indicated cerclage is performed on asymptomatic women who do not have exposed fetal membranes in the vagina. Now, sonographic assessment of cervix is usually performed between 11 to 24 weeks of gestation by transvaginal scan with an empty maternal bladder. Now, when is ultrasound indicated cerclage not recommended? An ultrasound indicated cerclage is not recommended for funneling of the cervix, that is, dilatation of internal os on the ultrasound in the absence of cervical shortening to 25 mm or less, the closed length of the cervix. Now, when should an ultrasound indicated cerclage be offered? For a woman with a single 10 pregnancy and no other risk factor for preterm birth, Insertion of cervical cerclage is not recommended in the women who have short cervix incidentally identified on the late second trimester ultrasound scan. Now, who should be offered serial sonographic surveillance with a view to ultrasound indicated cerclage? Women with a history of spontaneous second trimester loss or the preterm birth who have not undergone a history indicated cerclage may be offered serial sonographic surveillance as those who experience cervical length shortening of less than 25 mm may benefit from ultrasound indicated cerclage. Now coming to the rescue cerclage, also known as physical examination indicated or emergency cerclage. Insertion of cerclage as a salvage measures in case of premature cervical dilatation with exposed fetal membrane in the vagina is called the rescue cerclage. This may be discovered by ultrasound examination of the cervix or as, as a result of the speculum or physical examination performed for the symptoms such as vaginal discharge, bleeding or sensation of pressure. It can be considered up to 27 plus 6 weeks of gestation. Now, when should a rescue cerclage be discussed and considered? The decision to place emergency suture should be individualized, taking woman's view carefully into account. The balance is between a use, useful prolongation of pregnancy with its reduced neonatal morbidity and mortality against the possibility of prolonged severe neonatal morbidity in a baby that might otherwise die. The woman's decision should be aided by senior obstetrician. 
The insertion of emergency surplage may be labored by approximately 34 days in suitable cases compared with expectant management bed rest alone. Now, what are the contraindications to surplage insertions? The contraindications include, first of all, active preterm labor, clinical evidence of chorioamnionitis, continuing vaginal bleeding, PPROM, evidence of fetal compromise, lethal fetal defect, and the fetal death. Coming to the transvaginal surplage or the McDonald stitch, a transvaginal purse string suture placed at cervical ischemic junction without the bladder mobilization is called the McDonald stitch. Coming to high transvaginal surplage requiring bladder mobilization including shirotkar, a transvaginal purse string suture placed following bladder mobilization to allow insertion above the level of the cardinal ligament. Coming to the Shirotkar stitch, you can see in this picture. Now, trans abdominal surclage, a purse string, a purse to suture performed while a protomy or laparoscopy placing the suture at cervical ischemic junction. Now, when should a trans abdominal surclage be considered? In a woman with a previous successful, unsuccessful transvaginal surclage, insertion of trans abdominal surclage may be considered and discussed. Trans abdominal surclage can be performed preconceptually or in early pregnancy. Preconceptual procedure may be more effective and not associated with subfertility. Now, laparoscopic and open abdominal surclage have similar efficacy. The laparoscopic approach is associated with fewer complications and can be considered where suitable surgical expertise is available. Now, how should women who experience delayed miscarriage or fetal death be cared for? Decisions on the care and treatment in care of delayed miscarriage or fetal death in women with abdominal surclage can be difficult and women's decision making should be aided by senior obstetrician. Complete evacuation through the stitch by suction curettage or by dilatation and evacuation up to 18 weeks of gestation may be performed. Alternatively, the suture may be cut via posterior colpotomy. Failing this, hysterotomy may be required or caesarean suction may be necessary. The woman's decision should be aided by senior obstetrician. Coming to the occlusion surclage. Occlusion of external os by the placement of the continuous non-absorbable suture. The theory behind the potential benefit of occlusion surclage is retention of the mucus plug. Now, can surclage be recommended in any other group of women considered at increased risk of the preterm birth? For that, let us study the cervical surclage in multiple pregnancy. The insertion of history or ultrasound indicated surclage in women with a multiple pregnancy is not recommended. Coming to cervical surclage, in cervical surgery, trauma or uterine abnormality. The role of history or ultrasound indicated surclage is uncertain in other high group high risk group who display no additional risk factors such as women with the mullerian abnormalities previous surclass sur surgery like cone biopsy large loop exceeding of transformation zone or destructive procedures such as laser ablation or diathermy or multiple dilatation and evacuation coming to cervical surclage in women with a raised bmi surclage is effective in women with a raised bmi and one of the important complications of cervical surclage is that of the maternal pyrexia now, uh, this chart tell us about the whole summary of uh, how to manage a case of the preterm labor and how to offer cervical surclage. Women with a single term pregnancy, three or more previous preterm, offer history indicated cervical surclage. Women at high risk and women at inter intermediate risk and women in high risk offer transvaginal surclage scanning as screening test every two to four weeks between 16 to 24 weeks. Women at intermediate risk offer a single transvaginal cervix scan no later than 18 to 22 weeks. And cervix length 25 mm less offer ultrasound indicated cervical surclage. Now let us discuss which women are at high risk. Uh, women at high risk include those with a previous preterm birth or, or second trimester loss between 16 to 34 weeks of gestation, previous P prom of less than 34 weeks, previous use of surclage, known uterine variants, ultrasound uh, intrauterine adherence, and history of tracheolectomy. Women at intermediate risk are those like um, uh, uh, those having a previous full dilatation of cesarean section, significant cervical excisional surgery. Now, this is another chart before insertion. History indicated surclage offer first trimester ultrasound and scanning for any applied to ensure viability. 
singleton pregnancy and the absence of the lethal and major fetal anomaly. Coming to the ultrasound indicates the clot. It is preferable to ensure an anomaly scan has been performed. Coming to the emergency cell clot, if clinically suspected maternal white cell count CRP to detect chorioamnionitis, if there is suspicion of intraamniotic infection, amniocentesis may be performed. Coming to the removal of cross vaginal cervical cell clot. Before labor, usually between 36 and 37 weeks, the removal is considered and at the time of the pre-labor cesarean section and at its at an established preterm labor we consider the removal of the transvaginal ultrasound uh, we consider the removal of the uh, cervical cerclage i would like to complete my presentation with this quote that hard work beats talent when the talent doesn't work hard okay thank you so much i wish you all the best allah hafiz